right now I have joining us on the phone Megan McGale, and she is um, the author of a book called American Boy and also uh, the spokesperson for an event coming up, a lacrosse event uh, with Notre Dame. But she's going to share with us uh, her story as well about a uh, situation in her family uh, about her brother, Matt. So we're so glad you could join us, Megan. Thank you for being with us. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, Megan, first of all, can you start off and share with us about your brother, Matt? Um, actually, I am the mother. Oh, you're the mother. Shay is my Sorry. daughter. Yes. And so Shay wrote a book that she presented to my husband and I um, that was, was a very unexpected Christmas gift for us. Um, two years ago, Jamie, we lost my son to a heroin overdose. And he struggled with it for about 10 years. Shay is my 23-year-old daughter. Um, she is in a wheelchair. She has a form of muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to my husband and I, Matthew and she had made a pact. And the pact was Matthew felt that he had struggled for 10 years with this addiction. And he, he felt that he would never beat it. And he had said to Shay, I want you to apply to any college of your choice, and I will go with you, and I'll lift you out of the wheelchair, I'll shower you, I'll make sure you get to class on time. And so Shay then applied to 13 schools. She got into most of them, um, and three months later, she found Matthew in our bathroom, and he had overdosed and passed away. So part of her grieving was her writing a book that is launching November 4th called American Boy. And the book is a chronicling of her, his struggle with addiction through her young eyes. And it's very different. It's a very different view than through my husband and my eyes as adults. Um, but there's a lot of it that everybody can learn from. And so we are, as a family, we are launching this project. The book is the core of the project. Um, Shay will be the spokesperson when that time comes. She's currently at college right now. Um, and the, the really nice part of this story is, you know, we, my husband went to the University of Virginia and he played lacrosse and all of his lacrosse mates are still the, his best friends to this day. And one of, his, one of his close friends is Kevin Corrigan, who's the men's lacrosse coach at Notre Dame. And he had heard about Matthew's passing well after it had happened. And so he came to our home about two months ago, and he said to Larry and I, I want to do something in Matthew's honor. And he said, what I'd like to do is help you put together a lacrosse tournament because Matthew played lacrosse, loved lacrosse. It was something he and Larry shared. Um, and together, all of Larry's roommates, classmates, and Kevin Corrigan have put together this wonderful event that we're hosting October 20th in Northern Virginia um, with Princeton, with Notre Dame, and with Colgate. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful testament of friendship because, in, you know, it, it's really held my husband up and supported him because, you know, men, men grieve very differently than women. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's just been a beautiful, a, a beautiful, you know, lemon to lemonade story of love and friendship. And we think it's worth sharing. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, Megan. I mean, that's just, I can't imagine what it was like for your family. Um, you know, you said your son had a 10-year struggle yes. with, with heroin. Yes. I mean, yes. Do you know uh, how that got introduced to him, or was he able to keep it a secret from the family you know, for you know, in the beginning, you know, when when it started, it didn't start with heroin. Um, and you know, many people say, you know, oh, my kid just smoked smokes pot. You know, pot at some point for Matt and for a lot of kids is not enough, and they start exploring with other things. And Matt, unfortunately, was introduced to heroin by 
an older brother of one of his, quote, friends, um, and he didn't know really what it was. So very early before he was, before he turned 18, he came to us and said, you know, I have a problem. And, you know, we kind of suspected something was not right because he came to us and said, I'm going to quit the lacrosse team. And he loved lacrosse. And he started hanging out with different kids and all the signs were there. Um, and so, you know, we began to address it with him and he kept hiding it. Money would be missing, you know, things, you know, th- like, you know, things that, that just were so, so different than the personality he had the year prior. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the signs were there and, and we addressed them. We sent him to rehab three times and every time praying and hoping that, you know, he'd come back at a different kid. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, the, prog- the, pro- the program that we're launching that, you know, the book is the core of. It's called American Void. The website will be up on Thursday. And, and what it really addresses are the three obstacles that Matt had in his recovery. One of them was 28 days in a treatment center is not enough. You know, he'd come home. He's a millennial. He's used to, I need sneakers. I go on Amazon. They're at my door the next day, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was different than when I grew up. Um, And so he really thought treatment would be the same way. I'd go 28 days, I'd come home, I'd be able to, you know, turn my life around. And that's just, you know, that's all insurance pays. And so at day 28, it's like, boom, he's coming home. It's like, oh, my God, you can't come home. Same kids are here waiting for you, same environment, same, you know, same everything. Um, and the other one is the stigma of addiction. You know, Matt, Matt couldn't find a job after, you know, after people found out that he struggled and, and was in treatment. Um, and, you know, he'd get, you know, go online and he would apply on these applications. And, you know, he'd look at me, Jamie, and he'd say, you know, it would say, do you have a misdemeanor or a felony? Well, most kids that get involved with drugs at some point have one or the other. Yeah. And he'd kind of look at me and, you know, he'd say, Mom, what should I do? And, you know, my adult brain, I knew he should not lie, but I also knew if he, if he checked it, he'd never get a call back, and he never did. And so, you know, we need to address addiction differently because it's a disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third piece of it is, you know, there's no Angie's List for parents to find good treatment. And, you know, when you think about any disease, cancer or whatever you know you have all kinds of resources to decide what doctor you want to see what hospital you want your loved one treated at in in the treatment world there there is no list like that you're kind of like looking on the internet thinking you know is this is a good place for my kid and you don't even know what you're getting and the cost of treatment is exorbitant um so those are three things that 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 we are looking to influence in this program um, and the kickoff of it is just the friendship piece of this lacrosse tournament that, you know, I mean, we've got kids, we've got speakers coming that had a very similar fate of Matt's. You know, unfortunately, they're still alive, but made a bad choice and lost, you know, lacrosse scholarships and had to drop out of school and they turned their life around. And, you know, the sad thing is there is not one, but I would challenge anyone to tell me that everyone has not in some way been affected by this opioid epidemic, whether it's, you know, sadly what we went through or knowing somebody. Everybody knows somebody, you know, that is addicted or has passed away. It's crazy. And I think, too, that there's this stereotype of an addict that yeah. they come from, you know, a poor background, they right. don't have caring right. parents, but right. we see so many of these young people who are addicted or have died, um, who come from good families with, you know, yes. upper middle class and um, your yep. story, I mean, very involved and educated. Right. Uh, Eric Bowling, his son, right. same exact thing. Um, yes. You know, so that's it's, a great point. Yeah, that is a great point. Because if you if you think about it, if you you know, if you said to a group of kids in high school, bring in a picture of someone that's addicted to heroin, you know, they'd probably bring in that person that you just described, someone living on the street, bad teeth, haven't showered in for it. My my kid was a great kid mm-hmm. and he was 
I mean, he was just a great kid all around, a great heart. He loved his family. You know, I mean, and we were that family. I, You know, ironically, I was a pharmaceutical rep for Johnson & Johnson for 16 years. Mm. And, you know, and now every, you know, all these states are going after the pharmaceutical companies, you know, claiming they're responsible for the opiate epidemic. Um, and I was one of those reps out there selling those drugs. So, you know, I had a great job. I had a wonderful professional job. Um, my husband, you know, has had a wonderful career in, in you know, in, in the D.C. area as a satellite engineer. So, you know, we were a family all over it all over it and we had all kinds of resources you know and and i was relentless at trying to help my son but the reality is you know this monster of heroin took my son and i wasn't dealing with really the son i gave birth to i was dealing with this this person that had been taken over by this horrific drug so you know i i mean i i give you such credit for talking about this because a lot of people don't want to they don't want to talk about this. Well, and it's the, not my son, you know. Exactly, and it, and yeah. it, it's it's anybody's kid. It could be my anybody's my kid. kid. It could right. be anybody's kid. But then it's it's interesting that you do have a background working for Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, um, yes. Because there is so much finger pointing, and yes. I mean. Obviously, we have opiates that were developed for a reason, you know, pain right, management right. after surgery. I've had to take medication after surgery before and was on it for a right. couple of days, and that was it. And yes. where there's other yes. people that, that they can't stop. <laughs> yeah, right. But right. Who, who do yeah. we finger point at? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, in my personal opinion, because, you know, we... As pharmaceutical reps, you know, I remember, you know, we would get a list of, of, of doctors that we called on, and they would be tiered by the doctors that write the most scripts. And those were the doctors that we paid the most attention to mm -hmm. because they, they, you know, they were promote, they, they liked our drugs. They, they were good script writers of whatever we were, we were, you know, touting at the time. And, you know, I mean, those drugs were developed for specific things. They weren't developed for kids to, to take advantage of. But exactly. There, there were doctors that were prescribing, you know, you know, we'd get these lists and the numbers would be off the charts. And it'd be like, how can you be prescribing that kind of, that, um, how can you be seeing that many patients? Exactly. Um, we, Megan, we have to yeah. take a quick commercial break. So I'm going to put fine. you on of hold. Course. You leave yeah. us with some things to definitely think about, though, Megan. So we're going to return and we'll be right back with Megan Miguel. Stay tuned. Are you in need of a body shop that will baby your vehicle as much as you do? Well, that body shop is Davis Body Shop in Atascadero and Paso Robles. And when you bring your vehicle in for repair, Davis Body Shop will return it to you in pre-accident condition or better. And they guarantee it. Listen to what Erica has to say. I am extremely happy with the service received and the job done at Davis Body Shop. Best of all, my car was spotlessly cleaned inside and out. Better than the day I purchased it new. They understand the concept of give customers more than they expect. Thank you, Jason, Ann, Edgar, and everyone else. I highly recommend Davis Body Shop. Davis Body Shop will also work closely with your insurance company to see that the claim process goes smoothly. And to further assist you, Davis Body Shop has an enterprise car rental facility on site in Atascadero. Davis Body Shop is also on Theater Drive at Paso Robles Chevrolet. Going on now, the Labor Day event at Idler's Home. Save up to $1,000 on select adjustable mattress sets from the best brands. Save big on Stearns & Foster. Plus, save up to $700 on Tempur-Pedic. And get the Sealy Hybrid, rated number one best hybrid. Save up to $1,000 for a limited time only. It's the Labor Day event happening now at Idler's Home. Go to idlershome.com for complete details. Idler's Home, more of what you want for your home since 1954. 
garage door jamming? Time to call Hammond. Since 1966, Hammond Overhead Door Company has provided residential garage doors that offer more than just a strong and secure way to close your garage. They also add beauty and value to your home. Hammond Overhead Door has the right garage door to complement your home and your budget. Hammond Overhead Door Company. Call 238-0524 or go to HammondOverheadDoor.com. For over 87 years, H.M. Holloway has been a leading provider of gypsum and soil amendments to the farmers of Central California. Their pledge is to provide proven products with best-in-class service at a fair price that drives the greatest return for the grower. To learn more about products and services, visit HollowayAg.com. H.M. Holloway, turning dirt back to soil since 1932. If you own a fine European car and want it to run at peak performance, you can rely on the Autobahn in Templeton. The hot weather is here, so get your AC service before you get caught out in the heat. If you have a European car with smog issues, year 2000 or newer, nobody will be able to fix it better than the Autobahn. Many types of extended warranties can be used at the Autobahn. Call and ask about yours at 805-434-2200. Range Rover and Audi owners, you can have peace of mind taking your car to the Autobahn. So can Volvo, Mercedes, BMW, Porsche, Lexus, Acura, and Sprinter van owners. Mike and Joanne McCarthy have put together a top-notch crew of technicians while keeping their shop up to date with the latest electronic diagnostic equipment. There's no reason to spend your time traveling down the grade to the dealerships when you can get it done in Templeton. Just take your car to the Autobahn and get it into the right hands with the right parts for service and repair. Get it to the Autobahn. And welcome back to Sound Off. This is Jamie Umfenauer in the Cape Carroll Sound Off Studios. And we're back with Megan Megale. And we're talking about uh, her family's experience as she has lost her son to uh, heroin and fentanyl um, overdose. And her daughter, Matt's sister, Shay, has written a book that comes out in November called American Boy. And there will also be a lacrosse tournament on the East Coast um, to bring awareness to this whole situation and, and uh, you know, the book, as you were saying, Megan, is really at the center of this. Yes. And with, with the book and, and this, this experience that your family has gone through. Yes. What, how, how does a, your family cope with, with the loss of Matt, but also this journey that you had been on up until that point and now to right. today? Right. Yeah. Well, this is this is how we are all healing, you know, by knowing that Matt's life mattered, and every every struggling addict's life matters, and so you know anyone out there that is struggling, has struggled, is you know lost a loved one, we intend to become a very strong voice in the addiction community, um, and again, the website launches tomorrow. And it's going to be a great resource for families like ours because even though we had the financial resources, we didn't have the assets to make the best choices for Matt. Um, you know, I think there are things that we could have done better. And and you know what? If you don't share, you know, when Shay wrote the book, you know, there were some things, Jamie, that, you know, Larry and I looked at each other and said, oh, my gosh, you know, do we really want to put that out there? But you know what? If you don't share it, nobody learns, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't help anybody. So we're prepared to do that. And um, and everybody will learn something from this, you know, as far as how to, you know, how to how to help somebody that they love, you know, how to get treatment, how, you know, how to help them through this horrible journey so they don't have the fate of Matt. And I don't feel that because because we lost Matt, I don't, I, I feel that I am in as much of a position to, you know, to tell people our, our story because I didn't fail Matt. We did everything we could for Matt. Matt needed to do that himself, and he just couldn't figure that out. But it doesn't mean that we were bad parents, and I'm not ashamed of Matthew. I mean, I have never fought for anything as hard as Matthew fought for his sobriety, and I'm proud of that. I don't have any shame with my son. You know, he, he, he was the consequence of heroin. 
And I'm ashamed of some of the things he did, like stealing money from us and pawning things. But that was all to, driven by this addiction. Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, nobody will tell me differently. Yeah, and and I think that by you speaking out probably gives comfort to so many families. Absolutely, out there. yeah. And it's so funny because I I remember the first time we sent Matt to treatment, there was another young man in the neighborhood that Matthew had told me, you know, the parents are probably going to send him to treatment as well. And I saw his mother in the food store, and I thought, well, this is not something that you you know you have you pick up the phone and call your neighbor. Oh, you know, I just sent my kid to treatment. You know, you want to chat? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's very hard to find support. And I remember walking up to her and introducing myself, and I knew she knew about Matt, and, you know, because they hung out together. And, and, you know, I thought, okay, she'll at least be someone I can talk to. And I said, how is your son? And her, she turned to me and she said, oh, he's fine. We sent him to boarding school. Uh-huh. And I thought, what? And, you know, and I, I gave her a look that, you know, I, I know she knew. And I'm like... There's not a boarding school in the world that would take your son in the state he was in. Why aren't you just being honest? And that was a real eye-opener for me because I really looked to this person as someone that might be able to be a support to me. And that really changed my opinion of what, what these young kids or these you know, people that are struggling with a heroin addiction, what they go through every day. Yes. Every day, the judgment. And, and, and I experienced it myself in the food store. And that was just one time. Matt, Matt had that happen to him all the time. And it's like going to work every day and, and your boss saying to you, you stink at this. You know, I mean, you and I would quit, yeah. right? And Matt couldn't quit. He couldn't quit. So, you know, it's, it's, it's such an interesting aspect looking, looking now at our family because it's going gonna, it's gonna to open the eyes of people that are uneducated about addiction and it's going to give great comfort to people that are struggling. What is the website? Do you know the web address that yes, launches yes, this week? Yes, and it's up tomorrow. It's www.americanboy.org. And we would love to meet all of you. Americanboy.org. Americanboy.org. Excellent. And the book, American Boy, by his sister, Shay yes, Miguel, will, will be out. in November. Yes. So November 4th, yes. That will be available for sale November 4th. Um, yes, and, and, and it, it's, it's a fabulous book. Thank Thank you so, so much, Megan. Mind. Yes, you're so welcome. Thank you Thank for you. your interest in educating and awareness. Sunday yes. to Thursday.